Cochlear implant is an electronic device that replaces the inner ear and allows people without hearing to hear. Technically, cochlear implants have been around since the late 50s. However, that was very experimental back then. In the 70s, um, Dr. Bill House in uh, California and a few other surgeons around um, did some experimental single electrode or single channel devices. And there was a major study that came out of uh, Pittsburgh in the 70s by Dr. Robert Bilger, who was my academic advisor in graduate school, who tested all the people with cochlear implants. And he did this independently. He thought that the devices worked, but they needed to be a lot better. He and many others proposed at that time that we should continue implanting patients, but uh, we should be using multi-channel, multiple electrode devices to provide people more benefit and the companies then quickly developed multi-channel cochlear implants. Um, through the 80s they became FDA approved and now they're very commonplace. There have been well over 200,000 people with cochlear implants around the world. Last year somewhere around 10,000 people in the United States received a cochlear implant. Candidates for cochlear implants are uh, children or adults who are deaf. And deaf may mean different things to different people but um, Technically, I would define a person who has severe to profound sensory neural hearing loss is a candidate for a cochlear implant. People who complain about uh, hearing in background noise aren't necessarily candidates. You can't talk on the telephone as an adult, you may very well be a cochlear implant uh, candidate. Somewhere around 1 in 1,000 or 1 1.5 per 1,000 children are born deaf are born with severe to profound sensory neural hearing loss and um, if those children are otherwise healthy and if their parents choose for them to have a cochlear implant uh, then they may be a candidate. Surgery takes about an hour to three hours depending on the complexity of the case um, to implant the device. The ear itself sits in the temporal bone and there are different parts of the drilling out the mastoid allows the surgeon access down to the middle ear and then the inner ear for placement of a cochlear implant. We drill a seat or a well to place the device, a little indentation in the skull just so it sits in a little tighter, and uh, then we really get under the microscope to work. And we drill um, just in front of the facial nerve. Uh, you actually need to drill within one millimeter of your facial nerve to get to the middle ear and then to get into the inner ear to place the cochlear implant. Once you're through the facial recess, or the area just above the facial nerve, then you're in the middle ear space. Once we're in the middle ear, uh, then we identify the round window. The round window is the second window into the inner ear or the cochlea. The first is the oval window, and that's where the stapes, or the stirrup of bone, sits, the third bone. The cochlear implant is either placed through the round window, or through a hole just underneath or just next to the round window. Um, once you're able to see this, you either drill or open about a millimeter or a millimeter and a half opening, and then you place the cochlear implant through that hole into the cochlea. Once the cochlear implant's in place, then it's a matter of suturing the soft tissue and the skin closed, testing the device, and that's it for surgery. The initial hookup occurs about three or four weeks later, where the device isn't actually turned on, what happens with the initial hookup is that as long as the patient is healed well, there's, no, there's not much swelling, and everything is healed surgically, then the audiologist places the external processor on. The external processor has a microphone to bring sound in, it has a computer to process the sound, and it has a magnetic radio frequency coil to send the information through the skin to the internal portion of the cochlear implant. That's when the patient can start to hear with a cochlear implant. Currently the battery is in the external processor and uh, the different companies have different battery options. Um, in general you can use hearing aid type batteries uh, that last a few days. Uh, there are also rechargeable batteries that last a few hours to the better part of a day depending on how old the battery is. 
the cochlear implant companies are working on totally implantable devices where the battery will be inside. Hopefully you'll be able to just lay your head down on the pillow and then have the cochlear implant recharge overnight while you're sleeping. Cochlear implants in general are approved for children down to the age of one. Most insurance companies allow their children with profound sensory neural hearing loss to be implanted prior to the age of one. If the child insurance demands that we wait till the age of 12 months, then we wait till 12 months. Some don't, however. Um, children implanted between one and two perform much better, much more quickly than patients implanted between the ages of three to five. We prefer to see children as early as possible to give parents options, and if they decide on a cochlear implant, implant the child relatively young. Uh, sometimes even as early as seven to nine months. Even in 2011, we see lots of children later than we should. Children aren't doing well, they're not developing speech and language, maybe they've had ear infections or other ear problems, and all of a sudden you have a three-year-old who's not talking, who really doesn't have much language. So we prefer to see patients much earlier and help families make decisions in terms of hearing aids, further testing, possibly even cochlear implantation, possibly even sign language. On the upper end of the scale, how old is too old for a cochlear implant? I don't know that there's an answer to that. Uh, we've implanted several patients over the age of 90. They've done very well. Surgeries are relatively short, relatively bloodless, and outpatient surgeries. However, patients who are elderly often have chronic diseases such as heart disease or diabetes or lung problems and uh, require a little more workup and a little more care um, in and around the time of surgery. Um, we, we tend to keep our elderly patients overnight um, to make sure that they recover from surgery well. Is a hundred too old for a cochlear implant? Well, patients who live to be a hundred often live to be a hundred for a good reason. They're pretty healthy. I'm not advocating implanting every 100-year-old with significant hearing loss, but it's an option if the patient happens to be um, healthy. We also see a fair amount of young adults with significant hearing loss. Most of them have worn hearing aids their whole life. Uh, most of them talk, but they have deaf qualities to their speech. Many of them have not heard about a cochlear implant until they've reached adulthood and some of them are very interested in having a cochlear implant. If, if the patient has not heard much at all and has very poor speech, we don't expect great things for them as a cochlear implant user. However, if it provides them better auditory input than what they get through a hearing aid, if it helps them hear a little better, if it helps them talk or communicate a little better, then that may be quite successful for that particular patient.